Be thou on guard. Become consciously aware of where you stand this day in him. Worthy is the Lamb. He laid down his life for you to claim your victory. The victory is not really yours but his. He did the, all the work for you to claim the victory. Be ready, be prepared, be on guard. For the enemy moves in many areas and will endeavour to move in your life. Be prepared. Stand against all opposition and all thoughts that would come against you and would bring in denial even of your faith. Stand firm on my promises. Stand firm on what I, the Lord thy God, have spoken. For I speak truth, and I speak truth into your heart, into your spirit, yea, and even into your mind. Let your mind receive the truth that I have spoken unto you. No weapon formed against you will prosper, but you must work at it. You must stand against the wiles of the wicked one and know that you are, through me, more than a conqueror, yes. says the Lord your God. Yea, says the Lord your God, I am a merciful God. Yea, says the Lord, my mercy is without end, says the Lord to you. For yes, says the Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you from the foundation of the world. Yea, said the Lord, I love you so much. But my mercy, says the Lord, it's my mercy. Come to me, says the Lord your God this day. Come to Lord, come to me, says the Lord. Come to me, bring bring your problems unto me, says the Lord. Bring your ways unto me, says the Lord. Bring your life unto me, says the Lord your God. For I am a merciful God that love you, says the Lord, with an everlasting love. Father, and again I thank you, Lord, for the way you do speak to your people, to your church. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have placed in your church the gifts of the Spirit, that you can talk to the people, encourage the people, warn the people, protect your people. Father, I pray, Lord and God, that today that those of us that have ear to hear, we listen. And we heard, Holy Spirit, what you were saying to your people. May we run with it, Father, as you said, run. Run, Lord of God, and guard your heart. Guard our hearts with all diligence. May we do so today, Father, in Jesus' name. We bless you, we love you, and we thank you, Father, for the presence of the Holy Ghost through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Man. It's all prepared enough for what she goes to hospital. Yep. You take that over and you tell them. Yep, yeah. on Thursday. Oh, on Thursday, I went in for uh, um, two operates, two, two parts, one up here and one down there. When I first went, about six, eight weeks ago, they said, oh, I went in for this small prolapse, right? I come about with a hernia. A mass, of, a mass on one side, not hooked up to anything, but it could be malignant cancer. I had five fibroids, and I had a thickening of the wall at the back of the uterus. Could be cancer. And I had this fallopian tube that could be cancer. It really needs taken out. And if they take that one out, I said, look, take the other one out and take the ovaries out as well. I don't need them anymore. And they said, oh, fine. We'll have a look at it all. Well, I went in on Thursday and I said, Lord, just take over my mind when I'm under that anaesthetic because all these stupid things can come in. So I asked Jesus to open, answer the doors with anything. Just, Holy Spirit, take anything out of my mind. I don't want to have all this rubbish. I woke up and they tell me, they went in and they had a look around. But every That's after the anaesthetic. After the anaesthetic, I come to... And I come to and I said, but they take it all out? No, we didn't take anything out there. There was nothing to take out. It was all fine. And I said, really? But they said, no, there was scarring there from the operation you had before. I said, I haven't had any operation before. And they said, well, there was a bit of scarring in there. 
And I said, Lord, did you leave scars behind? And by the way, the hernia wasn't there. They couldn't find that. And they couldn't find that mass that, that went to. God's good, isn't he? Yeah. And um, they took this, they took the five, scraped that out and took the five fibroids out. And um, uh, they took a, uh, what do you call it, the scraping of back wall. And I'll get the results in six weeks. And we know that's not Praise cancer. That's not amen, cancer amen. Thank and, you, Jesus. And here I am, three days later. Oh. Amen. <laughs> Look at this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And do you know what the worst part about it all is? When my brother died, I didn't get the miracle I was hoping for. So when this happened, I thought my family's going to see a miracle because God's going to heal me. I oh, know. I do. Amen. And you know what? They don't believe. They say, oh, it can't happen, Carol. Well, let them. Something's it's not right. Go and get a second well, opinion. Be a living, walking miracle. Yeah, they said, go Amen. Get a, go Amen. Get, go and get a second opinion. Amen, amen, hallelujah, praise God. I remember at ten past five on that Thursday morning she texted me. And I texted her back and said, listen dear, we're praying for you. God is going to perform a miracle, didn't I? Is that right? And I said, God is going to perform a miracle. And I said, keep me posted and let me know. Then 2.30 that afternoon, get a phone call. And I thought, oh, she's out of the theatre now at long. She's home. <laughs> she sounded groggy, but she was home. And uh, I said, where are you? She said, I'm at home. No, you can't be. You're in hospital. Oh, me of little faith. <laughs> Praise God. So what a great and mighty miracle. We do have a miracle working God. And what a way he challenges our faith. So we do rejoice in that.
from the Bible College. Why? I'll tell you, give you an example. My daughter-in-law's sister, a few years ago, she wanted to become a nurse and she had a real pride and passion to want to go to, to Africa and, and into the underprivileged people in that Africa and take medical care to them. And uh, so she went to uh, sign up as a nurse and she went through uh, her training and she had the first four months of training was in a university. Right? And then on the fifth month, they went into the hospital and some of them went into operating theatres. There were 32 nurses signed that course on that week that they went into practical and 16 of them dropped out. Yep. See, they don't know. It's not the training. You can sit the down and train someone yeah. in, a, in a classroom and have to become a carpenter, but put the saw in their hand and the hammer of the nails and send them out to see if they can build something. Is that right? And uh, it's the same. You go all the way through your Bible college, like those nurses did, put them into the practice to one of the world. Not knowledge. Experience in Christ. An experience in Christ. Let Jesus Christ be the answer. He will lead you into all truth. Hear what's preached, of course, but then commit, take it back to Jesus. Okay, Lord, what are you saying out of this word for me? For me. And let it hit your heart, permeate all the way into your being. Praise God. I will. Now, when you wake up of the morning, how much do you set your will to have a victorious day? I got up this morning at um, about 20 to 5, and uh, I got up and I started my text messages, and then I sent out the text messages. Then I went out to take my wife's car back and out to the garage, and the battery is dead. Battery died of old age. <laughs> They don't live forever, you know, the batteries. And uh, so I thought, oh no, not one of these days. How do I get it out of the garage? So I rang up the RACQ. And I thought, oh God, this knock I'm not going to let the devil dictate to me how today is to run. I'm going to dictate to him. So praise God, uh, along they came and they fixed it all up and uh, got a new battery and now we can keep going. But you see, I could have said, it's going to be one of those days? Of course it's going to be one of those days. It's a Jesus day. It's a Jesus day, not a devil day. It's a Jesus day. And I refuse to let the devil have his way in my day. I refuse to let the devil have, uh, tell me lies. He's a, he's a liar and the father of lies. He created lies. And I live in the victory. And I live in the truth. That is Jesus Christ. So do you. You live in the truth. And we can claim that glorious victory through him. Amen. Amen, amen. And now we're going to Pastor Colin. He's going to come forward and share with us today around the table of the Lord. An exciting table we have. Oh, here he is on his wheelie. <laughs> he wheelie is here today. Stand up. Stand up. You might just put that in your pocket, my friend. Praise God. <laughs> you know, reading in um, Luke 22 and verse 14. Jesus said, And the hour has come, and he sat down in the twelve apostles with him. Oh, verse 15 says, And then he said to them, with fervent desire have I desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Before I say unto you, I will no longer eat with you until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. I just want to share a testimony this morning and, and I want to get back to that. When I, when I went into hospital, I, I was in the emergency department and... Um, a friend of mine rang my daughter and said, do you think Pop would mind having, having a communion service in, in, in the emergency? I said, well, 
She said, no, we would love that. So that's what we did. And then um, the next morning, a doctor came down to me and said, we want you to sign a consent form for a serious thing we want to do in your chest. We're going to put a pipe into your chest and suck all the rubbish out and take, you've got one lung with water in, we've got to get that out. But you want to sign it because this is very serious. We said you might not come through. And they phoned, the hospital phoned my doctor at, the, at, the, at Logan Hospital and my GP and said that um, it's quite serious what we're going to do, but we have to do it. And when I went back to see the doctor at the hospital, she was so happy. She said, when I heard the news, I didn't think you were going to come back. I don't think I would ever see you again. And my GP said the same. I saw him last week and he was as happy as anything. Smiling, he said, I was so pleased to see you today. He said, I didn't think you were going to come back. But you know, through this, I, I, I just trusted God. We'd had communion together and, and uh, they took these pipes out after a couple of days and then they started giving me pills because I had rubbish all around my heart they had to take away and water in my lung. But I do thank God. I do thank God. It's left me quite weak in my body, but thank God that I come through. Thank God that for his great mercy. And you know, Jesus, I wanted to talk to a little while this morning about Jesus. You know, with fervent desire, he said to the disciples, oh, oh, I'm gonna, we're going to break bread together. And I broke bread, you know, in the emergency department with, with, with my friends before the doctor came and told me the news. And, and you know, that God was with us. God loves us so much. He does. He does. And, and through all this, I can honestly say, even though what the doctor told me, I had no fear. That God was with me. God was with me in that hospital. And, and one of the doctors came around the next day, you know, after I was, I was still in ICU, and he said to me, can you read to me your favourite scripture? So I did that. And he sat on my bed and and I read to him a scripture and, and now after that the nurses all came round and wanted to know about God. What a wonderful saviour we serve this morning. But with fervent desire, he desired to have the Passover. Can you imagine what that means? The son of God. He's the king of the world. He's, he's the king of the church. He, he, he's the son of almighty God. And, and he wanted... He wanted to have to break bread with, with his apostles. And he, go, and he goes on to say, Then he took the cup and gave thanks and give it to them. Take this and divide it among yourselves. For as I say to you, I will not drink it of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. But you know, we're around the table this morning. And he loves us to come and share. The way I did when I was in the QET hospital, you know. We had a wonderful time breaking bread together. The three of us. But what a glorious time. And Jesus had the same desire to, to eat with his disciples. And this morning he has a great desire to eat with us. To come and, 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 and be with us this morning. You know, he's always here. Do you know, I dare to say that Jesus enjoys the communion service. You know, when we come together as people and, and, and just worship him. I thank God, you know, for deliverance. I thank God that, that you know, these doctors were expecting me to die, but I didn't die. And, and something amazing happened. A nurse came in to see me Thursday. And she said, uh, I've come to check your weight because you doctors said you lost too much weight. And we've got to check you don't keep on losing it. And then I said, I told her, I gave my testimony about what happened at the hospital. 
and she burst into praise and worship and she was a Christian, this nurse. And, and, and she put her hands up in our land room and thanking God and she said, you know what? God, God, wants you, God wanted you to be, still be here. And I said, well, I can say amen to that. And we had a wonderful time together. But, but Jesus, what a wonderful saviour. And then he took the bread and gave thanks. And gave it to them and said, this is my body. His, his body. What, what, what does that mean to you this morning? If it wasn't for the body of Jesus, we wouldn't have life. If it, if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, we wouldn't have life. And he gave it to them. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this to remember me. Every, every, every Sunday morning, whenever you break bread, you know, we're, we're remembering how much he loves us. If we're remembering, you know, and, and maybe we can stand this morning. Jesus said to the disciples in verse 19, This is my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise also he took the cup. After supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which, yet, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of the betrayer is with me at the table. And true that the Son of Man goes where is determined, but woe unto that man by, by which he is betrayed. You know, he was betrayed. He was betrayed. But we can give him thanks this morning because he did it for us. He didn't do it for himself, he did it for the whole world. He did it because he loves us. He did, it, he did it because, you know, with fervour and desire. Can you imagine the Son of God's fervour and desire, the love he has for us? So, Father, this morning we thank you for this bread and this cup. And we pray, Father, that your blessing be upon them as we eat and drink. We give thanks to you, Lord, for your holy mercy and, and, and and as we're eating, Lord, I believe you're looking on with fervent desire. Lord, let, let, us, let, let us eat with fervent desire this morning, Lord. Giving thanks to our God in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat together.